Good day, I'm Tamara McHale and this is your GIS News for Thursday, April 30. The long-awaited DNA bill has been tabled in the House of Representatives. National Security Minister Peter Bunting tabled the Deoxyribonucleic Acid DNA Evidence Act 2015 while making his contribution to the sectoral debate on Wednesday. Among other things, it will allow for the compulsory taking of DNA samples from criminal suspects. This legislation will provide for the keeping, maintaining and operating of a consolidated forensic DNA data bank to be known as the National DNA Register for the purposes of forensic investigation and human identification. In the meantime, the minister announced that Jamaica's integrated ballistics identification system is now fully linked with the Interpol Ballistic Information Network. This will connect Jamaica to other countries worldwide that have agreed to share ballistic data in an effort to combat gun crimes and the trafficking of guns across international borders. The Housing Agency of Jamaica, HAJ, will start delivery of approximately 900 housing solutions within the next 12 months. The solutions will be provided under a public-private partnership program in three parishes. Projects include Reed Spen in St. Catherine, Penwood Road in St. Andrew, and Vernon Drive in St. James, all of which have reached significant design stage. The Minister with Responsibility for Housing was making his contribution to the sectoral debate on Tuesday. He said the HAJ had completed over 1,500 housing solutions under a number of greenfield projects and plans to deliver over 1,000 more this fiscal year. Projects to be continued or initiated for 2015-16 include Green Pond in St. James with 324 solutions, Mosquito Cove in Hanover, 170 solutions, Shooters Hill Phase 1 in Portmore, St. Catherine, over 200 solutions, and non Pareil in Westmoreland, 100 solutions. $1.5 billion will be spent on construction activities under the Major Infrastructure Development Program, MIDP, during the 2015-2016 fiscal year. Six road contracts have been sent for letting, while two others, Chauvy via Claremont to Highgate and St. Mary, and Mandeville to Spurtree via Swaby's Hope, will be carried out by check in this fiscal year. Six bridges will, repairs to six bridges will take place. Among the bridges targeted for work are the Silent Hill Bridge in Clarendon, Jacobs River Bridge 1 and 2 in Portland, Latium Bridge in St. James, and Vanity Fair Bridge in St. Catherine. Transport Works and Housing Minister Dr. Omar Davies has named the five shortlisted firms that are bidding for the privatization of the Norman Manley International Airport, NMIA. Dr. Davies revealed the names of the firms while making a statement to Parliament on Tuesday regarding the NMIA public-private partnership transaction. The RFP is expected to be issued to the pre-qualified firms in June 2015 and the provisional preferred bidder will be selected and announced by Cabinet by the fourth quarter of this fiscal year. The Climate Change Ministry has received $2 billion from the Climate Investment Fund through the Inter-American Development Bank to mainstream climate change action across the government. Climate Change Minister Robert Pickersgill made the announcement while delivering his sectoral presentation in Parliament on Wednesday. He said the funds would help to climate-proof each sector. The program will strengthen institutional capacity as well as finance climate change adaptation in the agricultural sector and in the wider community. In the meantime, Minister Pickersgill says the climate change policy framework, which will guide the country's approach towards building climate change resilience, has been completed and will be tabled in Parliament soon. And finally, Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller today urged Jamaicans to partner with government to ensure that road users, particularly children, are safe. Mrs. Simpson Miller also made a special appeal for motorists to look out for persons with disabilities. She was speaking at the launch of the third UN Global Road Safety Week 2015. The week runs from May 4 to 10 under the theme, Save Kids Lives. The Prime Minister said road crashes significantly affected Jamaica's development goals because our people are our greatest asset. As a result, she said government was pursuing several strategies to reduce road crashes and fatalities. In addition to communication and the awareness campaigns, we will also be making changes to the Road Traffic Act. Discussions are also taking place for improvements in technology to include the use of electronic surveillance systems to curb speeding 
and the running of red lights. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Tamara McHale. Thank you for watching.